Welcome to an introduction to accounting and to park bench tutors. You can find us on Facebook. We're here to help all students. In this podcast we're going to look at cost accounting and we're going to consider the subject of overheads. So we're going to look at a company called Phobos Communications who make a range of mobile phones and they operate out of Dionysus Industrial Park. They have a number of fixed overheads and they have a number of variable overheads. So what do we mean by these? And why are they important? Well, they're important because we need to allocate the costs of running the business for doing cost accounting. That's one of the purposes of cost accounting. The cost of a lease is termed a fixed overhead. By a fixed overhead we mean any costs other than the direct costs that would be incurred whether or not the business was actually making a product at that time. So you've still got to pay the lease whether you are operating or not. In other words, we're actually producing phones during that day or week or whatever. So other fixed op- overheads can include items such as business rates and the insurance of the premises. Now, in contrast, variable overheads are costs that are incurred when the business is operating, but you can't actually associate them with a particular product. So, for example, if there is parking space which uh, has been rented for employees, you can't actually relate the cost of that rent to the phones that you're producing. So that becomes what we call a variable overhead. The most common variable overheads, particularly in small businesses, are heating and lighting costs because it's difficult to deal with those by allocating them directly to products. So we have to find other ways of allocating the variable overhead. So all those overheads, whether direct overhead or whether uh, fixed overhead, sorry, or whether variable, they are examples of indirect costs. So if I can just remind you, direct costs are costs that you can trace to an individual cost unit, such as labor, materials, and sometimes certain expenses as well, whereas indirect costs are those costs that can't be traced to an individual cost unit, rent, heating, lighting, and so on. So, how would we set out the costs? Well, the cost for each unit means the amount for the direct materials, direct labour, direct expenses. Then we add on the variable costs, and then we add on the fixed overhead, and then we have the total production cost. And you can see the normal way of expressing this is the cost per unit. So, how are we going to share out these overhead costs? Well, before we can share out costs, we have to set up cost centers, in other words, where the costs are incurred. So Phobos Communications has a packing department, and the costs associated with that cost center relate to labor, materials, cardboard, polystyrene, other materials, and so on. And other cost centers can be identified within a business. How many you actually have depends upon the type of business, the ease of determining costs, and of course what you want the information for. Now, how should a business apportion costs? In other words, how should it share them out? And there are different methods and they will depend on the business. In the case of Phobos Communications, they are using the number of square meters of floor space and they're going to use that for apportioning the cost of the lease to the departments and for heating and lighting and other overheads as well. Now in some cases if the height of the areas were significant then you might want to use cubic meters rather than square meters of floor space. Phobos Communications later introduced a testing and quality control department and that gave a, a new reason for apportioning costs and how that was done well one of the first things they considered was to consider the number of phones and tablets of each type that passed through the department they might have considered whether in fact the number of operations for a test uh, were important so if a tablet required 25 tests and a phone only five tests then you should probably consider that when you are apportioning costs So if you took the number of articles multiplied by the number of tests, that might be a good way of apportioning costs there. So let's put it all together, and we'll deal with that by looking at Phobos Communications when they started as a company producing only one product, the Curiosity Phone, which allowed interplanetary calls. That phone used £24 of materials and £12 of labour, and it passed through two departments, assembly and packing, 
the assembly department taking up three times as much floor space as the packing. And in January, when this started, the cost for rent were 4000 for heating and lighting was 7400 and they produced 200, sorry, 2000 phones during the month. So, let's see what the total cost per unit is. We can do this by calculating in two stages. First of all, calculate the overheads, in other words, allocating a portion to cost centres, and then calculate the overhead rate per unit for each department. And then for the total costs, add the direct costs and the overhead costs. So those two stages will help you calculate the total cost per unit. Right? Allocating a portion to cost centres, then calculate the overhead rate per unit for each department, and then for the total costs, add the direct costs per unit, the overhead costs per unit, and you have total cost per unit. OK, here's this in action. So we're going to have an allocation between assembly and packaging, and the apportionment will be on an area, so it'll be a 3 to 1 ratio. So rent was a total of 4,000, so when we apportion it'll be 3,000 to assembly, 1,000 to packing. Heating and lighting was a total of 7,400, so when I apportion that it'll be 5,550 to assembly and 1,850 to packing. And the bottom line here is just to show that if I add those two up I'll get 11,400 and if I add the 8550 and the 2850 I will get 11,500 as well. The rate per unit simply means dividing those amounts, the 8550 and the 2850, by the 2,000 units produced. And we've just rounded those up to make it easier as a cost per unit so it's 4.28 from the assembly department and 1.42 from the packing department. So I can now determine my total cost per unit, just setting out my direct costs and my overhead costs. So I have £24 for materials, £12 for labour, £4.28 for assembly, £1.42 for packing, so my total cost per unit is £41.70. Now, that was a very, very simple example. It gets more complicated. So, Phobos Communications later introduced a third department for quality control. So, they now have three areas assembly, quality control, and packing. And the apportionment is based on floor area. And the ratio of the floor areas is 2 to 2 to 1 for assembly, quality control, and packing. And they've identified three cost centers now, buildings, machine costs, and personnel. So for buildings, they've included all the costs for rental, lighting, and heating. For machine costs, they've included maintenance and depreciation. And for personnel, the cost of administration and management. The total costs are now shown. Remember, we're going to apportion these on the uh, to the ratio of 2 to 1. So total for buildings, 15,000. Total for machines, 25,000 total for personnel 30,000 I apportion the buildings I get 6,000 for assembly 6,000 for control 3,000 for packing I apportion the costs for the machines 10,000 to assembly 10,000 to the control 5,000 to packing remember my ratio is 2 to 2 to 1 and then for my personnel I apportion the 30,000 which will be 12,000 to assembly 12,000 to control and 6,000 to packing. They produced 7,000 units during that month. So I can now work out the cost per unit. I simply divide for the assembly and control and packing, I divide those totals by 7,000. So I get a £4 cost per unit from assembly, a £4 cost per unit for, from the quality control, the control department, and a £2 cost per unit from the packing department. Now, I can add up and find my total unit costs. My direct cost for materials, 24. My direct cost for labour, 12. For assembly, £4 for overheads. Quality control, £4 overheads. Packing, £2 overheads. Add all those up, I get a total of £46. So £46 is my cost per unit of the phone. That ends this podcast, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, you might look up our website, 
You can also sign up on that website using Moodle and then you will get our playlist so you don't have to search all the way through YouTube for all the different podcasts that we've produced, right? Just sign up on Moodle for our playlists by visiting parkbenchtutors.com. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you success in your studies.